Hello and welcome back to yet another series of Divinity Original Sins 2 Definitive Edition. My name is Saiken, we're playing on Honor Mode, uh, highest difficulty, and we are increasing the enemy strength uh, to not only match our level, but um, exceed our level by 2, plus a couple of other um, enemy advancements. So pretty hardcore run. Uh, we are in session number 5. Essentially we just cleared uh, the lower uh, section of uh, the beach as well as the crocodiles giving us access to the infamous teleportation gloves um, in this uh, series we're now going to uh, do the next fights that i would recommend uh, number one being a fight up here uh, with a couple of gamblers and then essentially going into the cave uh, to the south uh, that should give us enough uh, experience to further level up and proceed with the characters. So, uh, let's start right away where we have left off. Uh, I took the time in between the videos and checked the vendors a bit, uh, crafted and got some more um, arrowheads. Just want to show you another recipe that is important. So an arrowhead plus an oil barrel effectively allows you to create a slowdown arrow. Um, I definitely recommend uh, them as well, mainly because the slowdown uh, arrowheads, uh, or the slowdown arrows more precisely, are pure physical damage arrows, so they fill a niche that other arrows don't uh, fill. They are pure physical damage and they deal AOE uh, damage, so pretty solid there. Um, in terms of having them, you can see I already pre-crafted some for uh, Sibyl. She now has a lot of arrows. So, <coughs> moving on to the three uh, gamblers here. All three of uh, them uh, can be pretty bothersome experience. Um, if you prepare yourself uh, right though, uh, it shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. So there are multiple ways of uh, going about this quest. Uh, the easiest uh, way, if you have collected um, the cards, is to accept the invitation and lay down the sparkler. That way you essentially uh, win the, uh, the deck of uh, cards of the game and don't need to fight them. However, since I want to show you the actual fight, we're still going to fight them. Good. In order to fight them, we're going to prepare almost all of uh, the entirety here to be covered in uh, water. So we can turn all of that into a flaming inferno. Typical preparation. Let's encourage everyone. Let's rest. And then we're going to go for a fight. Good. Everyone immediately went into the fight. Losa goes first. So we still have one round of the Incarnate. Uh, probably could have timed that a little bit better. Let's start summoning uh, some of the totems. And let's take a look at their special ability. So he's the Sparks Master, which tells me that he will cleave and deal AoE damage in melee. He received Spider Legs, making him even faster. And she has a breathing bubble, making her uh, immune against um, against gas and ga gaseous attacks. Oh, that's all fine and good. We're keeping our teleportation for now. Everyone else is buffed, so we either could buff up further. I think that's what we're going to do. Let's buff our tank. Fortifying him. And giving him a magic shell. Good enough. Taking some damage up there. 
Uh, let's take a look at their uh, armor. All of them have 66 physical armor, which is quite a bit, and also some magical armor. We don't want to be really standing here in midst of everyone, so might as well pick her for now and start to get down her armor step by step. Nice little back step. I think we're going to be fine. Might as well... Ah, she's out of range. Should have done that beforehand, but it's fine. We, we still can use the incarnate to do it. We're just going to end the turn. Incarnate heals Sibyl. And let's take away his magical armor. Might as well move up. A pretty substantial amount of damage that they have dealt overall. But I think we can still handle. Elemental arrows are coming up, and this here should hit two of them. Yep. Very much hits two of them, and this here should take away most of uh, her armor. Yep, that worked like a charm. Okay, in terms of... In terms of... Ground. We're currently considered to stand on fiery ground. Which means we're going to start with using a fire spell. Further igniting him. Costs us almost nothing. We are hasting ourselves. We're changing the ground to blood. We're taking away the remainder of her physical armor. And I think we might want to reduce his movement. There we go. Wonderful. Lose begins to heal her uh, to heal herself. Summons another totem. And I think we're okay. Might as well go out of uh, the uh, steam cloud there. So we can actually target someone. Alright. Going forward, let's take away her melee attack. And... Knock her down, that way she is basically out. This guy here has no magical resistance, so might as well put him to sleep, which wastes his turn. Alright, that uh, is a pretty solid start. We continue to essentially hit her. In terms of magical attacks, no one has any more armor. Might as well. Start poisoning everything. Very nice, that worked out well. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to hit him, but I think it is. Yeah, I probably should have used the ones instead for the last turn, but it's okay.
All right, everything's burning. Might as well kill this guy. There we go, one down. We can simply take her out for two turns. Chicken form is just incredibly strong as a crowd control. Even furthermore heals himself and we're fine. All right, let's heal up. Seville heals herself, plus buffs herself. And this here should take away the last armor. Chicken now begins to run beautifully through all of the fire, dealing even further damage. All right, that works like a charm. We're continuing to summoning additional totems. Let's buff up everyone here, uh, plus give the incarnate a ranged attack. All right, Ifan still can tank him quite well. Plus we do have additional uh, crowd control. So this here knocks him down. Very well. That's the second kill, right there. And this here. Should be the third one. Okay, easy peasy. Created a bit more fire than was probably necessary, but we got some decent loot out of it. So. If you struggle with the fight, I can highly recommend you to pre-position yourselves up there and just wait. Pre-buffing, uh, using a spell on all three of them. And uh, that should make the fight rather trivial. In terms of loot, we got ourselves a nice little uh, physical axe, one-handed, which deals a lot of damage. The only downside uh, for that axe is it's not a dagger, so it's scaling with uh, strength and not with uh, dexterity, plus our uh, backlash ability does not work with the axe. Everything else pretty much fine. Um, it's really a decent amount of damage. And yeah, the staff is arguably as good as the dual wielding ones. Probably even better because it also sets uh, bleeding. Good, pretty high level items. I like it. Which means our next uh, target now is we're going to go down here to the cave entrance and we'll essentially clear the cave. All right, we entered the cave. Uh, let's give it a go. First thing to know about the cave is there's yet another place 
where a wit of 14 allows you to gain some extra experience. This here is uh, the cave of Brachos. It's ba basically one of uh, the caves that you could start to even explore at the very beginning without even killing something. And the spear of Brachos right here is a very very decent two-handed weapon uh, which scales completely off of dexterity if we wouldn't have such a good shield it would be an uh, probably a good idea to use uh, that spear Marvelous, my friend. The switch will open a hand. Brackers would have made me a supplicant. I was. I never thought I would put your here. Good. We will get to him uh, later, just a little bit later. In terms of the spear, it's really a pretty decent weapon, level 3. Uh, has a lot of damage plus some earth damage and sets petrification and 10% uh, chance uh, plus the additional slow chance. So I really like it. Uh, the only reason why we're not going to use it is we do have a uh, wooden shield that is pretty much better because we need the de uh, defense at the moment. Okay, time to level up the characters to level 4. And what we're going to do with um, Ebum here is we're continuing to go into Finesse. We are going to get another level of Polymorph. Because we will need uh, level 2 Polymorph skills soon. Which gives us yet another ability point. Putting us up to 18 Finesse. For those, um, we're going to give her... I, uh, we said the last time we now want to continue with intelligence and she already has hydro skilled up so now it's time for geomancy to respectively pyromancy if we want uh, the additional pyro buffs i will go for geo2 first and then we're, we can continue with uh, pyro after um, actually we need to get summoning to uh, next as well. Um, in terms of in terms of Seville, really straightforward finesse again, and we already have two huntsmen. We're continuing with warfare. The two huntsmen come uh, from uh, this uh, chest plate. So if you wouldn't have a chest plate with uh, plus one to huntsmen, um, you would need to skill to level two here. Uh, Saiken. Uh, continues to go into intelligence to uh, increase his damage potential there. Pyro is leveled up. Uh, we're now continuing with uh, Geo, and uh, since both of them are going to be our main uh, source of skills, Hydro will happen as well. I actually start to like uh, splashing into the Necromancy. If we can keep items with plus Necromancy, that's probably not a bad idea. Good. So that concludes this cave here for now. We're going to come back a bit later. I think level 5 is the next level when we are getting upgraded skill books. I was wrong. So since we just hit level 4, what we're going to do is we're going to go through another round of stealing in order to get the new skills. Uh, they are actually pretty important so um, that will round out the characters even further so let's uh, let me do that before we continue with the cave all right the party is back and we have uh, skilled some additional skills uh, for even we do have Bouncing Shield as an additional really nice AOE uh, damage attack which by the way also scales with the um, defense rating of the shield so the higher that is uh, the higher the damage here we also got some aoe skills uh, such as soothing cold as well as further summoning skills we revamped psyken a little bit you can see that he got the most new spells so he should dish out quite a bit uh, more damage and we finally got sky shot and tactical retreat which will make our physical damage even a bit 
better. So with that, we can now proceed into uh, the cave and I can show you a really easy method of getting through that encounter. Uh, I found that uh, method when experimenting a bit and ever since I uh, used it even on very high difficulties, uh, even with twice the amount of enemies, it never let me down. So I consider it almost uh, foolproof. In terms of getting rid of uh, this here, that should do it. Good, everyone moves into the cave and there's a little secret here which is not immediately visible, which is this ledge up here. So what we're going to do is, Lose is essentially going to stand very close to the ledge and is teleporting both of our ranged DPS on top here. We're not only getting rewarded by absolutely phenomenal uh, loot. Well, it's maybe not that phenomenal. But we're also having a high ground position and that's really helpful. So also we'll repeat the process this time with uh, Seville. Once both of our ranged DPS are standing up here we're good to go there will be three frogs spawning over here and i'm always careful on how to approach this Lois could theoretically hand over the gloves and tell uh, and let or be teleported up there i don't think that it is absolutely necessary so instead Let's clean up uh, some of uh, the areas here. Summon our incarnate. By the way, the incarnate itself will not trigger the frogs. Only by moving in will the frogs trigger. And they are uh, dealing a lot of damage, so be very, very careful here. All right, Iban is immediately in combat. Good. Lowe's is still out, uh, outside of combat, which means we can uh, change a few skills around. Further buff up the incarnate. This fight is going to be hard, make no mistake, but with the right preparation it should not be a big deal. Uh, to my understanding, we can't hit anything back here. We can we have a really, really long range, but we can't hit anything too far away, so Seville uh, needs to simply stay put for now. One easy way to improve our movement to essentially use the, uh, use the polymorph school. We're then moving in and let's utilize the moment in order to give our tank a little bit more health. As soon as the frogs are going to come in uh, Loso will no longer have that position, so this combat here um, kind of by itself get, uh, gets everyone in combat. They are dealing a lot of magical damage and my recommendation is to be pretty careful. Uh, this guy here for instance has earth immunity. This here is... Um, and this one here is fortified. So 
the buffs make it even worse, but what I was about to say is their magical attacks are um, quite powerful, so you want to be very careful there. Let's pull them a little bit closer. They have the jump ability. Yep, there you go. Luckily, the poison wave only hit uh, Ethan. Could have been way worse than that. We're moving the incarnate uh, bitch to the front and let us start. Hasting ourselves. First of all, we're going to uh, use elemental arrows. Now we're hasting ourselves. Alright, in terms of his abilities, he has a full poison immunity, a full earth immunity. Which means we're probably going to use fire in order to deal with him. We're not standing on fire ground, but it's okay for now. Might as well use it. So we're further buffing the Incarnate. Yep, nothing I can do. Just way too much uh, damage. That usually does not happen, as you could imagine. Question is, where could we revive him? This here is a decent spot. I can promise you this is not usually happening. He was fully buffed and has really, really decent gear. It's just the overall uh, amount of damage that uh, we are receiving is incredibly high. <laughs> All right, so what we can do is we can certainly knock this guy down. One over here. Can we heal Ethan? No, we can't. That stinks. We need to re uh, resurrect her. There's no point in not doing it. All right, so this guy he still has physical armor. We can't control him. And Ethan most likely needs to, first of all, heal himself. We can, however, use Chloroform. And I do have an idea. How about jumping here, taking away some of his armor, then secondly healing Seville, 
and thirdly chloroforming him essentially taking away his turn I think that was a reasonably well played turn Sibyl needs to heal herself we're drinking a potion for magical armor it's just too much damage can't deal with it and let's get rid of his physical armor hasting ourselves for next turn <laughs> 41 damage I was fully healed up. Well, this is ridiculous. Okay. As you might have guessed, uh, this is not exactly working according to plan. This guy here could die next turn. Just drinking some magical armor because I don't want to be one shot again. Is he sleeping? No, he's just burning. Can't really do much about that. What we certainly could do is... Could slow down both of uh, these frogs. And I'm thinking which consumable might work best for it. Hmm. I mean, this would prevent him from using ranged attacks. I think that's not a bad idea. On the flip side, we also can't use our abilities on him. Simply currently untargetable. But I think that's a fair trade-off. We need to kill the guy down here. Let's slow him down. You know what? Can we hit him? No. I pretty successfully prevented that. That's Elemental Arrow and maximize our damage against this guy over here. All right, Los is in a tough spot. Going to use a high quality potion. She also continues to shield herself. 
uh, herself. And having a fire um, summoning might be the way to go here. Yeah, he just removed the slow immediately. Luckily for us, he only had one turn. All right, Losa. You know, first things first. We're at least letting uh, Saiken regenerate a little bit of his uh, of his damage. Plus, let's heal him. So I do have the feeling that we're going to need it. As yeah, soon it's going to be Saiken's turn, and what I would want to do is... Oh, this guy is fortified. Good, no problem. Well, never mind. I wanted to drop one frog onto the other. Didn't work as I intended to do it. So let's just dish out some damage with a Searing Totem. Good enough. Okay. Um, definitely want to kill the frog down here. So he's almost down. Air damage, are they... Yes, 20% resistance to air damage. But he has no resistance to poison damage. This should kill him. Alright, two more to go. It's a tougher match than I would have expected. Both of them, however, line up beautifully. There we go. Knockdown. And some extra damage. Yeah, this is how it should have uh, worked from the very get-go. Before we got stupidly one-shot. So that's not going to happen to you. The one-shot at least. Plus, with the massive damage bonus that you do have on top here, you really should have no problem whatsoever finishing these guys. Normal frogs here would have 100 hit points. I mean, it's rare to see them with uh, 200 plus hit points. All right, knock down again. Beautiful. And there we go. Shot, shot, and killed. Whew. Tougher than I would have expected. And to be honest, also tougher than I would have liked. Let's loot up and get out of here. The good part is, uh, if we're if you're fighting high level monsters, you're also getting uh, high level items. This bow here is probably 
such a massive upgrade over uh, the old one. So it's 14 to 17 points of damage. Let's take a peek here. Her old bow was like what, 5 to 7? Okay. Yeah. She's going to uh, deal a lot of damage now. Got one resurrection scroll back. Normally you should be able to do it without even having to use a resurrection scroll. But I feel in this specific case, like we immediately got damage without even being able to do anything against it. Good, here's another poison, by, uh, poison barrel if you haven't yet had a chance to get one. Couple of smaller items, nothing to really write home about. And looking at the time, I think we're done with this episode. Uh, once you're done with all of the, this here, you can simply move back, detach him, everyone else teleports to the square. Thank you for your help with that. She bowed. I hear of Noah's in this. It gives me weight. I am not. Thank you. The frogs are gone. Good. Got another 600 uh, experience for essentially killing uh, the frogs. Now that this is done, let's take a look where we uh, stand. We have uh, cleared everything around the coastline and um, at the exterior area. We got two more things to do. Number one, the cave here, the hatch, uh, and that's probably the next uh, mm, uh, task that we're going to do. And then the arena, which is also a, a very interesting uh, place. Um, we're going to do the cave in the next episode and the arena probably in the episode afterwards. Um, thank you so much for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed the content, feel free to leave a comment and um, a like down below. See you!